Hey everyone, Tracy Hazard here. Welcome to the new Trust Economy. And I am really excited about this interview today. I got to interview Eric Tippetts of Nasgo. He's the co-founder of Nasgo, which is, if you haven't heard of it in the blockchain world, it is really exciting. It's a blockchain internet application platform. Um, D apps, if you've heard of that term, or distributed apps. Like this is just a really interesting world in which we're working at and thinking about dot com back in the day and wishing we were now we we had gotten our websites and we had gotten our dot coms back then and now you have a chance to be on the block wouldn't that be cool and they are doing this with his co-founder steve chang he has sold a combined more than three billion dollars for the companies that they work for and um they really are working on what is a trillion dollar blockchain it is the coolest thing and is really, really interesting. And it is why I decided to get so excited about blockchain because it, it really showed me application. It showed how things can happen. So I want to introduce Eric Tippetts. He's an author of a financial self-help book called To the Top, Simple Everyday Steps to Succeed Financially. He has built relationships with Fortune 500 companies, 3M, Procter Gamble, Boeing, HP, lots of others. Um, and he's been on lots of talk shows, so you may have seen him before. And they also um, just got featured in Forbes, which is how I found out about him and how I got connected to him. Um, and we're called the Trillion Dollar Blockchain. So uh, without further ado, Eric Tippetts. Eric, thanks so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk big picture because you know, we, we get like narrow into the tech details sometime, like, you know, this yeah. whole discussion on top blockchain tokens, mm -hmm. crypto, like, I mean, we're just all in like the tech details sometimes that we forget the businesses, creators, musicians, like all of those kinds of things out there that we have and need to be able to move our businesses forward, move our influence forward. And if blockchain is the best way for us to do that or tokenization, you know, we need to understand how that works at, on a grand scale. Is this going to make my business better? Yep. Well, I, I think the world has, you know, the World Wide Web created a connected world. And I think that was a good thing. That was for some, a way for people to be bigger, to think bigger, to connect bigger. But I think we're at a place in the world that there's so much chaos, there's so much noise, people are tired of it. And it's hard to cut through what's real and what's not. I mean, there's some amazing marketers. I'll tell you, I do a lot of business in China. And we had a company approach us that said, you just give me what you think, what it, just give me a, a theme and we will create a whole story, a whole like business, a whole world around it. And I thought, that is scary. And what it showed me, yeah, what it showed me is, you know, the World Wide Web is at a place where I think people would love to just scrape it clean and say, okay, let's start over and let's, let's now we know what was there, now let's start over and really start to innovate in a way that we can connect in a very clean and efficient, authentic way. You, so, you talk a lot about like this sort of, and as you're mentioning here, sort of that dot-com era opened up this for us. And now we're moving into the era of, Blockcom, which I love that term. Talk about that a little bit and sort of, you know, define that for us. Absolutely. So dotcom created the, really paved the road to show people how to connect and how to be online in a global ecosystem. But the challenge that SMEs have and people have around the world, and especially when you do global business, is how do I build trust immediately with, with somebody that's a stranger? I don't know them. And so, you know, it, blockchain is a transition to, hey, how do I learn how to be in a global ecosystem, but then how do I build trust and transparency in this, in this road, in this ecosystem? And that's and build it in a really authentic way because I mean we're sure. seeing things like you know Amazon reviews being bought and we see well, a lot of this. You know where they come from. Yeah, I mean, it really is one of those things to where it's funny. I was talking to somebody today and they were, they were mentioning something. I said, that's really weird. I went into your blockchain and I don't see any of that. And, you, and there was this long pause. <laughs> I'm like, uh, yeah, you're, it's open source. So you can see these things. So, you know, the blockcom is really the dotcom um, and blockchain, the next era of irreversible data, trust, transparency, and connection 
we love the whole idea of an authentic relationship that people are creating globally where it's typically hard to do. Well, you know, I really like that because, you know, this is one of the things. So I was lucky enough at the chain exchange, which you were at as well. And that's where I heard you speak for the first time that I got to interview Waz. And, you know, this is really something that why he's so passionate about blockchain and is that is that it can really reward these creators and these authenticators and these yes. people who are really, really doing something big. And I mean, I get this all the time in podcasting is I have a podcast that has 100,000 listeners a month. And, yes. you know, there's no documentation of that anywhere. I, I have to like pitch sponsors. <laughs> for what is a fabulous show on 3D printing, right? Like I yes. have to like go out there and pitch them on it when they yes. should be able to just look at that and go, we want in. That's and right. The ones who do do it know how fabulous it is because they see the results of that. But it's really hard to do that when you have no of this transparency. And yes. in the podcast world, they've hidden that transparency. It's very much the same way in a lot of influencers realms as well. Big time. Overstated I, you know, hype. Yeah. Are well, these real followers? Well, that's exactly right. I was on a call with Tony Robbins advisor and he, he was going through everything that we're talking about in tokenization and getting the companies to tokenize and create more of a seamless uh, connection with businesses and their customers. And he asked me at the end, he said, Eric, this sounds amazing. What's the downside? What is, you know, if you were to tell me what the risk was, what do you think it would be? And with Tony on there on, a, on, the, uh, on the call, I said that you're not as big as you think you are. <laughs> and it was yeah. like, whoa, okay. I, but that's the reality is, you know, in a market to where you've got tr uh, transparency, it is something to where influencers, you know, the ones that are really doing it, and the ones that really have the people love it. They love what it means to them because it breaks them through the crowd of bot followers, all of the you know, things that really are not true, yeah. that, that it, sh it shines on the people that are authentic and real. Yeah. And, you know, that's really, I think, one of my passions about it. So I, I have to tell you, until I come home, I, I call my husband, who's my partner in business, and I say, I think you should get here at Chain Exchange. I was like, I think you should show up and listen today. <laughs> I mean, besides the fact that Waz is going to speak and I knew he would like that, like, you know, show up. And, yeah. um, and he was like, okay. And I was like, because the other flip side of that would, I would come home and he think I drank some Kool-Aid or something because all of a sudden I was like, this isn't hype. This yeah. is real, right? Real. <laughs> yeah. And be, and you know, what really opened up my eyes are things that I really like to see. And, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about today, even more depth is applications of things. So where yes. blockchains being utilized to solve problems, I see that happening. And you have a system which just makes it a lot easier for and cost effective for yes. companies to implement that and be able to create, you know, we call them in this world, D apps, decentralized apps, yes. but it's really about creating a system for providing whatever that might be. You want to provide some kind of incentive or some kind of uh, token or whatever that might be. Yes. Well, it's, I mean, I think you just hit it. It's the usability that, that to us, blockchain is a buzzword that's, you know, overused. Yeah. And, and, you know, that was a year ago. And so people are still trying to hold on to that. But for us, it's about usability case studies. It's about how do people take and implement, you know, whatever is built on blockchain into their life daily. And then, and many times not even realizing that it's on blockchain. Yeah. And so yeah. <laughs> that, that has been our focus. We, we have been working for the past six months on, it, it's funny, we, we launched our main net and we launched a wallet and inside there we had an app store, a dApp store. And what we quickly realized is that people would go and create tokens and call us and go, this is so easy and cool. This is so cool. What do I do now? And, <laughs> and that was a major, that was a reality question that we said, we're, you know, we make it so simple that anybody can do it. But now you need to, you need to give them a roadmap. You need to show them, handhold what you do and how you, you become successful or I, with incentivization using tokens, but you got to have the tools, you got to have the training and education to do it. 
And so that can that we talk a really little bit about what that looks like from a business perspective, you know, kind of in an example basis, because I, I like to work like that. I, I have this visual in my mind of, you know, what is this company? And so, you know, yep. let's I, I have a podcast network. Yep. So so we have 125 podcasters. They're small to medium size entrepreneurs who, um, you know, are running coaching um, businesses, chiropractic offices like they're, you know, they're they're. They're mainstream America, right? This is, this is our market. Exactly what you're talking about. It's the flower shop. It's a local restaurant that, um, that has a, a market. Like I was just talking to a, you know, my favorite Italian place, uh, Luciana's in Dana Point. Oh, and good, good restaurant. <laughs> great restaurant. And I said, do you know your customers? And he goes, well, yeah. You know, he knows his, his, his every night customers, his regulars. But he has no database. He has no way to connect to the actual market that come in, the 95% that uh, come through. And all he sees is the bill, the, the revenue side, but never gets to know them. So for us, we wanted to create a apps adapt that is really like a, you know, a CRM system, a contact management system that allows for you to tokenize your business, then allows you to go to your customer Get them into your ecosystem. So we have an app launching called Amico. And Amico is a social media. It's a a communication app. It's a video channel. It's a storefront marketplace. It's a a peer-to-peer exchange. And it's a a decentralized wallet. So it holds all crypto and all of Nazco's tokens. Yeah, so, and for those of you who have not tried to put crypto onto your platform before, it's incredibly difficult. Yes. Well, and that's, <laughs> it's so funny to me. Like, people go, man, you have your own blockchain? Like, it, like it's, it's uh, something, you know, people can just go and build a blockchain. If that was the case, we'd have thousands of blockchains that are real and actually being Yeah, used. it's not it's like that. <laughs> very complex. And yeah. it's... Uh, it takes the right type of skill, the right type of team to do it, but then to build on it and build something that has the speed, the validation, the scalability, and then build all of that into one place and with a wallet that fuels it with one click is extremely complex. Right. So, and with the wallet issue, it, you're, you're right. It's speed. That has the, been the problem with why most of the wallets fail. And that's it's like you set your amount that you might want to sell your book for, for instance, um, uh, yes. Monica Prophet, the, the, my co-host on this show, she tried to do it and it kept failing. The transaction kept failing because it would take so long to convert. By that time, it would say, oh, the amount's not right. That's right. So, yeah. It's just, I mean, impl- trying to implement something like that, it, it's not as easy as we think it's going to be. And so for you to solve that problem so that it's in for us it's something we're able to just just add on that's yeah, fantastic I, I look at the world we live in today it's disconnected it's the most connected world that's disconnected so like for instance you go on to Instagram and so you look at these influencers with you know Kylie Jenner's got 106 million followers but when she wants to but she can't sell anything if she wants to sell anything she has to take them out of Instagram and go over to, you know, Barney's, and then it goes through a merchant account. Like, why can this not be just one click and it's done? And so we've actually created that to our social media. People can bring their audience and say, hey, come in and be a part of what I'm doing. I just tokenized my brand, and I'd like to incentivize you to come and follow me here. And this is a way that I'm going to communicate with you because we, you know, doing so much business in China, they are they are absolute mobile centric and they have at least two of them and probably three of them. Yes, and I know. I personally go to there sometimes 10 yeah. times a year. So I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> don't, don't you love though over there? It's the velocity. I remember I'm sitting down having a, a breakfast sandwich and I'm watching this little store and there was a thousand people that went through there in a matter of, you know, 10 minutes, five minutes. It's because the efficiency of they walk through they grab what they want, they scan the QR code, and they keep going. Yep. It's, there, there is no cash. It, it's all QR code, and everything is based on that, and it has a wallet right within. So we, we took that and put it into the digital world in the crypto space that we feel we, we are the only platform that is creating the ecosystem that puts it all in one place 
takes all the crypto and puts them in one wallet along with the tokens and makes it to where they all it, it, within 10 seconds can transact immediately. So, you know, this is really one of the things that we strive to do at, at my podcast platform, Poditize. We strive to like bring everybody's value back to them, their business and back to themselves so that they're in control of their subscribers. Facebook isn't or iTunes isn't, right? We want that. We want the value to be with you because you're producing all the content. You're producing right. all the value there. And so we want at the end of the day, the transactional value to be with you as well. And so you're enabling that at a much faster speed than, and than this, the rest of the systems are because the systems are being built by people who have their own selfish means along the way, right? Well, they're, they're it, listen to them talk. They're always talking about themselves and how their blockchain is this and how big their blockchain is and this and that. Who cares? It, it, to me, that's you, you, you are the hero. You're trying to create you as the hero. For us, it isn't even about our customers. It's about their customers. Because I, again, going to this local restaurant, I said, tell me what your customers, how you would like to communicate with them. Tell me what their concerns are. What are you hearing feedback? So it wasn't so much for him. It's that this person is having, he's got his world. And this is what's in it for me to help my customers. And that's really everything that we do and build and create is always thinking in the mind of what our customers' customers' concerns are and how do we address them? How do we help our customers address those concerns? And it isn't us the hero, they're the hero. Oh, that's... I. So with you there, I, I think that that's the, you know, that's the goal of great products, right? That's the goal of great um, shows. It's, the gro it's, it's where innovation really happens and creation really takes off. And one of the ways that you're also doing that is you're, you're working with musicians. And um, could you talk a little bit about that? I, I know your event hasn't happened yet as we're recording this, but this won't air until after your event. <laughs> well, so. it, it's, you know, Jafar Jackson and I were on the New York Stock Exchange on the trade floor talking about it so it's I mean no secret but we are going to absolutely change the music industry entertainment industry uh, sports industry we've connected and partnered up and this will be an announcement that we make at the event and uh, with the largest uh, players in that market we have artists now coming to us sports celebrities coming to us uh, entertainers uh, the largest agency entertainment agencies coming to us because what they're realizing is that's an old model. It's broken. It's and very broken. It's broken. And, you know, for us, we, want, we wanted to come in and give the life back to the artists. That's where the creativity, they're the ones creating value. It's, it blows my mind that you have the machine that gets in the way of this authentic, beautiful artist that just gets stompled by, you know, a machine that just trying to figure out how, the, the money side of it and, and completely lost the artist side of it. Well, and you know, that's exactly what it, we used to think, Oh, it's these labels and they were so controlling and all of that. And now we have, you know, big, big organizations that are like controlling the access to the listener and exactly. the value is not coming back to the musicians and the artists. And it's the same thing in product design and development. As I work with so many Amazon sellers and so many product inventors out there, the yes. value is not coming back to them either. And it's, you know, when you look at that, at the end of the day, if they make a few hundred thousand dollars, not millions off of their products, then they did okay. They did great, actually. And that's sad in the, the amount of time, effort, and energy it's taking. And that's, I, I will tell you, that is our number one focus is, is the SMEs. It, we feel like it's not fair that okay. you, you have people around the world that have, everybody's got dreams and hopes. And I feel like, they, the banks won't help them and merchant accounts. You've got a third of the U S that's underbanked. Don't even have a bank account. How am I going to go get a merchant account? So you just, you just took them out of the game. And so, and then I go look at India and I go look at Vietnam and I go look in China and all these places. And there's, there's amazing innovation. There's so many cool ideas and people with amazing products that can never get in, can never get, into the world, into the game. But what are they going to go on to Apple? There's 30% taken out right immediately on iTunes in, into the iOS app store that, that you just, you just took them out of the game. 
And so we wanted to level the playing field. We wanted to make, th this is for the little guy, this is for us. And it's for the individuals, it's for the people that never got a voice. I talk a lot about, you know, I'm just a voice of entrepreneurs around the world and helping them actually connect with each other and transact and add value to each other's lives. Like, why should I have a firewall between me and China, between somebody over in Shenzhen? That, yeah. That's what, that, I mean, that's not human. That's, that's not humanity. Why, you know, why break that connection? And so for us, the decentralized hosting to allow conversations to happen that never did before, and then to be able to transact and communicate and innovate and collaborate with each other, I just, I get super passionate about that. And I look at artists. I mean, I, I look at, this is one thing I talked to Jafar about. I said, you know, I hear your uncle's songs all the time over in China. And I guarantee you, they're all pirated. I guarantee you they're, they're not getting paid for it. And so here you've got this disconnect. Nobody knows what's going on over there until you go over there. And you realize, oh my gosh, like what's going on over here? This is, this is wild, wild west. And so to be able to tokenize, give them the ability to take control and, and start to connect directly to their marketplace and, and, and bridge that gap so they actually can, can say, hey, these are things coming out. Be a part of this and be a partner with me. Yeah. Oh, I love what you're going with that. But you're also going on a philanthropic side to it. Can you talk some about that? Because that surprised me when I heard you speak it. And I was, I, and that was when I said, oh my, I'm really all in here. Well, it's, you know, it's funny to me how you, I watch a lot of people and especially at a high level, everybody's trying to figure out their story, their unique, you know, selling proposition. And it, it's sad because behind the, the curtains, many people talk about their business and at the end they go, how else could we, could we, could we get you know, uh, you know, more business? Hey, why don't we donate? Hey, why don't we give to a charity? Like, would that make us cool? <laughs> and, and I look at that and I go, that's a scam. Like that's a sad, you're, you, that's the lowest is when you use people's emotions to get a, into a further place. So if you look at our blockchain, it was built with, I mean, with social impact. That, that's an extremely passion, extreme passion for me. You know, it's probably just, you know, people have their different quadrants of who they are. You know, I'd love to be more of a driver and just drive, 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 and, you know, hate and this and that. It's just not me. And so I want to see people happy. I want to see, you know, the world moving in, a, in an alignment and in sync and in, in a happy place. So in our blockchain, we actually created these delegates and these delegates produce blocks every 17 minutes. It's the miners. And so we've actually taken one, and I mean, this is something to where we're constantly giving more and more, but at least one to charities. So you have a charity that gets donated to every 17 minutes and it's without human intervention, without human bias, without greed, because that's what happens. People feel great one day and give, and then the next month when, you know, people rely on it, there's, they're not there. And so we wanted to stabilize that. And that was something I talked just at the UN Summit for Global Social Impact. And I said, guys, we need to get back to humanity, get back to people connecting and giving without, you know, without this greed and this, uh, you know, bias that's happening in the world today. Oh, you know, I really, I really, uh, to me, social impact though is your social impact isn't just that philanthropic. It is the side of rewarding these creators because that's the social impact I try to have in the world is really making sure that creators can get their stuff out there, that they can really get recognized for what they've done and how innovative they are. And so that's one of the reasons you're on the show because I want to make sure that people know how innovative you guys are and what you're doing here because well, I, it's, it's revolutionary. Well, and I think the, the, I, a key thing is that we live in the age of influencers. I believe that. Yeah. I mean, you, when, when you've got somebody that can tweet and take companies down, they are, there's the power these influencers have, but with power comes responsibility. Yeah. And I think you just hit it right there. Social impact with responsibility, sustainable uh, uh, impact. I feel like the artists many times and influencers, they don't know what to do. 
And they're so tired of getting scammed from people that they just stop doing it. Well, and you know what? This is the new trust economy, right? Like that's what totally. our podcast name is and that's what we're about here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we wanted to use that name yeah. because it's trust and distrust, right? And it, it's artists, inventors, like I see with this, inventors are so distrustful of China. I am not. I have a whole different view because my eyes are open to how great it is to collaborate with them. And yes. that actually, my, ex my personal experience is that I've, been, I've been, never been knocked off by a single factory and I've done over 250 products in just the last decade. Not my whole career. That's just the last decade. And yes. I've never been knocked off by a single China factory that wasn't put up to it by a U.S. retailer. That's I was knocked off by Staples. I was knocked off by Walmart, but I was not knocked off by the factory itself. They wouldn't have done it to me. Well, and no. the only reason why people like the music, you, you know, I just had this conversation with Jafar and he was asking that question like, well, why do they pirate? And I said, because nobody pays them. So they have to go. But if you tokenized and gave the market that they are now partners with you, they would turn into your, your biggest advocates in your police. Yeah. They would sell police for you because they're now partners. You're now incentivizing them to be a part of what you do where most people don't give them anything. They, you know, they don't incentivize them. And so it's, it creates that type of opportunistic of how I can get what I can get because nobody, nobody includes me. I, I, nobody puts me in the game with them. Right. And that's this like trust is trust. So how can we shift that model and really turn it into a way which the trust part doesn't matter. I'm going to earn the trust by how I operate and by how yes. I do that. Yes. And that's, to me, I feel like tokenization is the perfect way to do that. You, you got, you got innovators, you've got artists, you've got people that create something, but yet they, they have no way to, to bridge that, the gap to go get to their customers. And that challenge is then you've got the social media, you've got the conglomerates, you've got the people that once you do that out there, you don't own it anymore. Right. It's like I was just talking to somebody uh, that was talking about MySpace. And uh, Dr. Dre put a song out there, California Love. And somebody, somebody was wanting to do a commercial, use that song. And Dr. Dre said, hey, you can't use that. MySpace said, yeah, you can. Anything you load on my platform, we own it. And they went to court and I mean, they won. It's, yeah. it's like, that, that's a scary thought. And so we look at innovators, the beauty of blockchain. I mean, you think about artists with paintings and you think about music. I was just talking to a David Tickle, you know, big uh, producer, songwriter. And he said, holy moly, there's times that we're doing a song and we look at each other and go, this is going to be the biggest song ever. He said, we could go and tokenize that immediately and have it to where it's locked in. That's our song. Nobody can change it or tokenize, you know, we've got LeBron James shoes, uh, different shoe, you know, lines, you got sneaker heads and they would love to have it. And it's limited edition. And, and I, you know, I'm a part of that. Yeah. And so there's, there's so many cool things I'd love there's to do. So many really cool ideas. Yeah. You know, this is a, you know, you were mentioning that about the MySpace. This is a big issue in the podcast world. And we have this where the podcast platforms, the hosts themselves, the minute you take advertisements on their platform and they place those ads on your show, they own your show content and it's not yours anymore. Wow. And that is really scary. And that wow. happens at certain levels. And so I always go free is not free. So when you're on a free platform, it is not free. It's somebody else owns that on you. And so like, I have to that's remind right. you of that. Like you get what you pay for, but it's, that's I, one I of the, the golden handcuffs. Yeah, so, exactly. You, you, it's one it's of the free, reasons. but just remember that yeah. somebody, <laughs> somebody is, you, you owe a favor to somebody. That's right. Exactly. You will owe them something. And so yes. that's why we started the platform the way that we did so that we could return that and say, there's no way we don't want your own. We don't want ownership of it. We're going to help you monetize, but yeah. we're not going to, we're not going to claim ownership of it because at the end of the day, this is your content and you deserve that. And so we're going to create a win-win model for everyone so that the advertisers can trust that you really are who you say you are and have the influence you say you have. And yeah. that's really why blockchain, when I, when I saw what you were doing there, I go, I can actually do what I've been dying to do, what I want to accomplish. And so I think that there's a lot of companies out there like that 
who are sitting back and looking at that. So would you go over just, you know, kind of briefly a little bit, some of the block box stuff that you have, because some of that stuff is like really cool. And people are like, I wanted to put this in my business and this is coming fairly soon, like within the next six months or so. Is that right? It's already out. It's already out. It's already out. out. It's uh, so you, you, you said it earlier about innovation and, you know, we're innovators and I, I love that, but it's, you know, that also is very confusing for a lot of people. You can innovate, like technology in actuality can get in the way. And, you know, now I'm becoming slower and less efficient and, and on, on social media not being productive. Um, and so we wanted, to, we wanted to simplify technology. You know, when you say blockchain, most people's eyes glaze over and they don't know what to do about it. And, and so what we like to say is, hey, we're the GoDaddy. A blockchain. GoDaddy really helped the World Wide Web, you know, get its get its momentum, its tipping point, because they made it simple. And so the block box was that is our way of making getting onto blockchain extremely simple. And so for three hundred dollars, you know, three hundred three hundred fifty dollars, you've got a domain address. So just like GoDaddy, that I go on and I buy a domain address on the World Wide Web you buy a domain address on the blockchain web. And so now they can say, hey, I have my, my place and nobody can take this name. Second thing is I can take my existing website and connect it up to our decentralized server nodes and put it onto blockchain. Or I can create my new website and connect it right onto blockchain. And then third is I can tokenize my business and in less than five minutes without writing a single line of code I mean, it's, it's the funniest thing. Like, I didn't even realize how cool it was until yes. I started going looking at everybody else and I go, wow, that's, that's hard. Yeah. It's like, very cool. I mean, yeah, you know, just thinking about though. all the things that I would have to invest in to develop. Like I, I, when you, when I had heard that you said three, three fifty or whatever it was, I was like, that is crazy. <laughs> it's such it's a well, good deal yeah. because it, it's so, that just makes it so simple. I, I have. I have companies, I just met with a company last night that has spent nine, nine months looking to launch, has spent close to 400,000 to launch their token on Ethereum. And I looked at them and I go, for what? Like, you, let, me, let me just show you this. And I got done, I, and I just did a, a demo a, a token. And they looked at each other and they go, we are, we're not gonna do this, are we? And, and the CEO goes, we have to. And they switched switched we just tokenized them this morning and because it was so simple they they could do it themselves they could now immediately go right back to their you know their investors into their community into their employees and immediately launch that to where they were still another month off and so you know the block box is our attempt to make just like godaddy did to the world wide web we want to make you know it's simple for companies to go on to blockchain the block com web well i want to make it simple as well so you got my backing i'm i'm promoting and out there and we're pushing podcasters into it from our podetized platform uh, whether they like it or not i'm pushing them into it <laughs> i love it no it's I, I mean it's 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 i we're always looking to collaborate with good people and this is this is a fun podcast because I love connecting to people that have a bigger vision and are truly wanting to make other people better. And so I look at podcasts. There's a lot of people that'd be amazing podcasters that just don't, they don't believe in themselves. They don't think they can do it and they don't have the skills. So I I love what you're doing. Anything that we can do to support you would be, we'd love to do it. Well, well, I'm all there with you. So Eric, is there anything else you want to tell us about what's coming up and what you're working on and, um, and other ways in which people can connect with you and NASGO? Well, one of the funnest, you know, Amico is we're having a blast, but we just launched our pre-launched in Saipan with our China team, our Vapor, and it's our augmented reality. And Ooh, all I you love people, AR. <laughs> all, it is so cool. And it's going to change the world of advertising. You, you imagine, you know, right now for me to do a Super Bowl ad is, you know, a million dollars, $3 million a minute where I can create and put content right in the Super Bowl instantly and have it to where I can tokenize, incentivize people to look at my content as they're at the Super Bowl. 
So it, we're just, we're going to break all the, the limits, the borders. I call it the RELS, you know, the World Wide Web has RELS. We're breaking that. We're going to own space. We're going to own air. People are going to be able to put content anywhere in the world in air and uh, from any place. So, so um, David Williams wrote an article on you in Forbes uh, about um, calling you, you know, the GoDaddy <laughs> of blockchain, but also he talked about access and education, which is what you're really talking about here. And that, I think that AR, this is, I've written many, many articles myself on AR and AR is the, one of the best educators because oh. it hits us in our brain center in a way in which we are like, we get it. Yes. Well, what's fun is people know how to play a game. And so if I can, if I, so think of a local restaurant. Yeah, I think the challenge for most companies is that how do I drive behavior, action to my prospects or my customers? So if I can, I mean, be at my restaurant, shoot a quick video and say a bar special, and then, then do a reward of, let's say, 20 of my tokens, and make it to where people, as they're about to go out to dinner, they just go like this and they look at what, what videos, what uh, incentivize uh, rewards are around their local area and immediately say, hey, look at Luciana's is doing a special. They, want, they go over there. The only way they can actually get the token is they do a whatever circumference they want around the restaurant. Once I'm there, it pops up. And I, after the video, I click on it and it goes right into my wallet. I can now go use that for a free dessert or free for a free drink or whatever. Right. right. Oh, I love it. We're, we're so, <laughs> so great. So now the last question I have is kind of a um, trillion dollar blockchain. That's what it says, trillion dollars. So yes. that's and, really big. Like, how do you do that? I mean, yeah. How do you think that big? Like, how do you keep yourself at that level? I really want to, you know, from a personal entrepreneurship point, point well, of view. That, I love this question. Wow, this is, I think this is the most important question in my mind of this whole podcast is how do you become it? Because it all starts with the management. If they don't, if you don't believe it, you know, people can see through that very quickly. And, you know, the trillion dollar platform, we've reverse engineered it. We're not sitting here just, you know, that we didn't use that as some gimmick. We have absolutely, and once you, you guys meet my partner, Steve, he is this math genius that just thinks through methodically through things and reverse engineers how you get to a trillion. And he, he breaks it down by the minute, by the second, by the hour, by the, what do we need to do? What's this? What, how much do you, does this cost? How many businesses? So we've broken it down. You get into businesses, then you look at what products do they do and what kind of, what kind of transactional volume can each business, can you help them, can you help them hit? So, that's one thing as far as the application part of it, but I will tell you even more importantly is the hum human side of it. I think people, they, uh, they don't invest in themselves. That's something that I would love to tell all of your listeners. You know, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to invest in yourself. That is hands down. I start my morning and I get up before my family gets up. I think too many people get up and they're already late. They're late, they stub their toe, they're having a bad day, they're always late. You've got to wake up earlier. And to me, the mornings are everything. So I wake up before, at least a half hour before my family wakes up. I love to read. I love to find out what's going on in the world. You've got to, and I don't go read the news. That's, I'm not interested in the news. I'm not interested in that crap. I go and read things that, that spark innovation, that they, it sparks my brain in a positive way. So I do that, then I spend at least 15 minutes meditating. And I think that's just to get your, you into a place that you can be clear. Your mind can be in a clear state that it, you'll be amazed at the epiphanies and you'll, you'll keep going, I have these, these amazing dreams and, and epiphanies. It's because you're clearing out that clutter, you're silencing your mind to, to bring that. And then every day I, I start my day with intention. You have to write down what you're going to accomplish that day or else you will find you'll always drift and get to the end of the day and you never had enough time. Never got to accomplish what you were going to do. So these are, these are things that every entrepreneur, you know, every business owner, I just, the CEOs and the people that I've, I've met that are truly innovating, they all do this. 
this is just commonplace. They absolutely, it's something that, you know, I, I'm adamant. I don't allow people to get into that space in the morning. And once I start my day, then I start it with intention. I go, I mean, full out, all in. Yeah. And I so, don't let other people set my, set my agenda for the day. You're going to, you're going to set it yourself. I love well, that. And think of how many people start their day by checking email. Yeah. They start their day by reacting to other people's things. You have to start your day with you, what you want to do. What do you want to accomplish at the end of the day? And at the end of the day, I, you got to be grateful. You got to, you got to go to bed. Too many people go to bed watching the news and putting all that negative in their mind and wonder why they're always thinking they can. All this negative uh, interaction that they have with themselves. You got to end your day with a positive of what you did great today. You got to start your day with the positive of what you're going to do today. And, and to us, I think that's both Steve and I are adamant about it. We've been doing it for, I mean, 10 years plus. And, you know, for us, this is just common. So when you talk about trillion dollar and you talk about, you know, the person, the people behind it need to believe the trillion dollar. It's truly that it's the self, the personal development, the self development that I, I feel like we've, I, we've I kind of got that honed, honed in each morning. Wow. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I appreciate that. And it's, you know, when you think this big, you want, you wonder sometimes, is this hype or is this, you know, is this real, but it's a mindset. You're right. It is. It's absolutely a mindset. And, and um, I'm fascinated and look forward to getting a chance to chat with Steve because I love the idea of, of really that detail reverse engineering. <laughs> you're you're going to love, he, he's the you know, I, I, I'm the love to go out and I love to hug people and I love to get out there and, and he's just, he's the quiet, but he's, but when he speaks, he speaks volumes. And, <laughs> and it's really, it's really fun to, to get the two of us just because there's a difference, but, but it works. I mean, East, West, he's Singaporean, you know, Westerner. And so people go, how did you two even like, this is a <laughs> gang right here. But it works extremely well. Our brains are different, but they complement each other. And he's really my best friend. I mean, it's really something to where I love him to death. I'm 10 years older than him. So I'm like his, you know, his, his older brother, he calls me his uncle. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, there's one of these dudes. Are <laughs> but, but it's a beautiful relationship. Wonderful. Well, Eric, I so appreciate you being on the show and we'll have all the information on how to get in touch with Eric and how to find NASGO uh, in the show notes for this episode or the blog post for this episode, because that's how we work at New Trust Economy. And, yeah. um, and I thank you. And I know we're going to have you back again, because I know we're going to be talking about some milestones in the near future. I love it. Well, it'd be, it'd be a blast when we launched Jafar Jackson on the 27th. It'd be fun to do a recap and have Jafar come on with you. I would love that. That would be fantastic. Well, cool. thanks again, Eric. And we look forward to talking with you again soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.